In this video, we'll demonstrate Playback Pro. You'll see why it's rapidly becoming the system of choice for standard definition and high definition media playback. This is the Playback Pro operator interface. It is designed on a preview program paradigm similar to a production switcher. Program is what is going to the output and preview is what will play next. Preview is always in blue, program is always in red. Playback Pro utilizes two graphics outputs, one for the operator interface and the second for playback. The second output will connect to a video distribution system, scan converter, or directly to a switcher. The preview and program windows automatically adjust to the aspect ratio of the external display. To manually change the output resolution, or aspect ratio if no external display is present, click Setup in the top right corner of the program window. A dialog box will appear with all of the resolutions and refresh rates available for that display. For maximum performance, media clips should be stored on an external RAID drive when using MacBook Pro laptops or iMacs. We recommend upgrading to 7200 RPM internal drives. Storing media on an external RAID 0 drive formatted with the largest block size available and connected using FireWire 800. For Mac Pro desktops, at least two 7200 RPM drives should be added and striped in a RAID 0 configuration, also using the largest block size available. A hardware RAID card is not necessary. The interface is divided into four areas. The playlist, transformation controls, navigation controls, and show controls. Let's start with the playlist. The playlist is simply a list of clips that are to be played back. The clips can be video and audio, video only, or audio only. Playback Pro is based on the QuickTime framework, so virtually any file type can be played back by installing third-party QuickTime components. But not all video types have good playback characteristics. We recommend using the Apple ProRes 422 codec, which is the best, or H.264. For the most current information on recommended codecs, settings for ripping DVD content, capturing or creating files, be sure to visit the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website at www.dtvideolabs.com. There are three ways to load clips into the playlist. Click the plus button above the playlist. Drag and drop single or multiple files. or select New Clips from the Clips menu. Playback Pro is non-destructive to the original content. The clips shown in the playlist are only referencing the files. This allows you to duplicate a clip multiple times and set different in and out points, different aspect ratios, and different levels without ever altering the original file. To move a clip in the playlist, use the Move Up and Move Down buttons, or just drag and drop. To help identify a clip in the playlist, you can enter customized text in the clip number, title, comment, and section fields. Just double-click on the field to enter information. For easy reference, the true file name of the clip and its location will be displayed just above the navigation controls. To link a clip, select the Link checkbox. To add a timed delay between the end of this clip and the next, select a delay time from the Delay pull-down menu. To loop a clip indefinitely, simply click the Loop checkbox. All settings within Playback Pro are stored in a show file, which can be copied to a backup machine. If you require more extensive control over transitions, such as cuts or crossfades, or if you need the ability to do multi-sync roles, preview Playback Pro Plus by downloading it from our website. Now I'll review navigation controls. The outside buttons shuttle to the beginning or end of a clip. The buttons just inside of those move the clip forward or backward one frame at a time. The two innermost buttons are play and pause. 
Below these are the shuttle speed control and the scrubber. The shuttle speed control alters the playback speed in forward and reverse. Typically, the scrubber is used to find specific parts of a clip so that slates and in and out points can be set. The scrubber is primarily used in preview, however if needed, it can be used in program. Let's move on to the transformation controls. Just like navigation controls, these affect the clip in preview as long as nothing is loaded in program. For this demonstration, there's nothing loaded in the program window, so I'll be able to modify the preview clip. I'll use the controls in the main tab to set a slate. I'll use the scrubber to advance to the image I want. And click set slate. Now I'll set my in and out points. And set my beginning and end fade options. The default setting is no fade, but if I click on the fade in or fade out button, a three quarter second fade will occur. If my clip was looping, I could set the delay time between the loops here as well. Next is the Geometry tab. These settings control the clip's size, aspect ratio, horizontal and vertical positioning, as well as horizontal and vertical cropping. While most products only stretch to fill sizing and offer limited cropping, Playback Pro gives you real-time, infinite control over each clip. Let's change this 4x3 clip so it displays better when outputting to a 16x9 display. Note that all of these settings can be copied and applied to other clips as needed. On the Levels tab, you can adjust Volume, Black Level, Gain, Saturation, and Gamma controls. I need to fix a dark video, so I'll increase the gain here. Like the geometry settings, once your levels are set, you can copy and paste them to other clips or you can reset them. Finally, let's take a look at show controls. Show control settings are not saved and have no permanent effect on a clip. It is important to understand that Playback Pro is a single channel player, so there will always be some black between clips. If cuts or dissolves are required, then you can use our multi-channel player, Playback Pro Plus. The most important functions within show controls are take and end all. By pressing the green take button, or the enter key, a clip will move from preview to program and begin playing back. Because the link checkbox is selected, the next clip in the playlist loaded into preview and is set to play next. If take is pressed while a clip is playing in program, the program clip's audio and video fades out and the preview clip begins to play after any specified delay. There are counters over preview and program for reference and easy countouts. The green counter shows the time elapsed relative to the in point, and the red counter shows the time remaining relative to the out point. Normally used for cue to cue rehearsals, we'll use the go to 10 button to play at the last 10 seconds of the program clip and view the transition. As it ends, we see the two second delay, and then the clip in preview begins to play. Notice that the geometry controls are now in red and can be used to alter the clip in program if necessary. To unloop a clip during playback, deselect the loop temp button. The end all, or escape key, will end a clip immediately and execute a three-quarter second fade out of the clip's audio and video. Anything loaded in preview will not play. The optional Playback Pro USB controller can be used to take a clip as well and duplicates the controls most often used during live playback. So that is Playback Pro, the professional solution of choice for playing back and managing video and audio content. If you are ready to purchase, please go to our website at www.dtvideolabs.com and click on the purchase link. If you'd like to try any of our software, just go to the downloads page of our website. 
If you have any questions, please email sales at dtvideolabs.com or call 602-687-8507 and you'll hear back from us right away.